to learn it. Hello, everyone. We're here. We're back with the Mac Brothers podcast, episode 643. I'm Matthew, and that's Sean. I'm John, and that's Matthew. So today we have um, we have a few things we want to talk about. Number one, our new songs are out. There Goes My Baby, Just the Summer Away. Go listen to the songs. We have beautiful artwork done by our good friend Kylie, a.k.a. HoneyBats13. Uh, go check her artwork out. Go check uh, us out. And thank you for listening to the podcast if you're a new listener. We like to talk about uh, uh, nothing here. We, we, we don't. We just bullshit. And then we sometimes we both fall asleep at the same time. Um, it's a, it's usually usually a good time. The show should be called Snorefest. It should be called Snooze Fest with the Mac Brothers. Because we're boring. We have nothing. To, if you're new here, we have nothing interesting to say about a single thing. Well, at least John doesn't have anything interesting to say about a single thing. I'll tell you what, though. I just got what is the that? wax melt. I just got the wax melt out of the holder. That's that actually looks up. really gross. You got to heat them up so you can put a fresh one. You can slide it right off after a minute. You put a fresh boy on there, and then the smell is come a coming. Speaking of fresh, speaking of fresh, speaking of wax melts. Speaking of new music, John sent me um, John sent me this uh, this Willow Smith performance from the other Let night me set on, it up. on Saturday Night Live. Let me set it up. So I feel like I'm, I'm late to this. I feel like I feel like this is yeah. This is a whole story you have. I'm watching Saturday Night Live, and the most precious Irish man is hosting. I don't know his name. He's an older gentleman. Um, he was great. He was endearing. He was um, not like classically funny. The sketches were really good. The writing's great. SNL was actually really funny. Um, but this guy was just such a sweetheart. And he was my favorite guy. And he made me feel good inside. He made me feel like he was like a grandfather, like telling me good things about life kind of a thing. Mm. And then he and then he goes uh, and then he introduces Willow. And then the first Willow song is the most. Uh, Which one was it? The was it the slower one? The one that didn't have the screaming. Okay. Yeah. 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 That was the most. That was just absolutely the most annoying uh, Machine Gun Kelly type of song I've ever heard in my life. I like, actually. Well, you yeah. Go go ahead, John. Destroy such Willow Smith a music. meaningless pop punk. Fake pop punk uh, song about absolutely nothing that matters, right? The second song, and th- this beautiful man has to introduce her again. This second song, God, I wish I knew his name. The second, he played in, um, fuck, The Hobbit. And Colin Farrell, he brought Colin Farrell out because he's Irish. Jason Wallaby. Is that his name? No, I don't know what his name is. Oh, sweet. It's the sweetest boy. He's a man. He's not a boy. He's a man. You can tell that he's a man and he has sophistication. But anyway, so and he, he's just and he's sweet. So he introduces Willow a second time. And you could tell you could tell he's just like, here we fucking go. And then Willow actually to her and her band's credit. They play a song, right, that sounds like a new Muse song, which means it's not good, but you can tell there's instruments being played. She's singing Mm -hmm. live. It's not, I don't think it was auto-tuned. It didn't sound auto-tuned. She has a decent, for for what we're talking about, she has a decent voice. And I'm like, you know what? Good for her for at least trying to not, not every single song, you broke my, well, I think she was singing about you broke my heart. But she did add a scream. The music was Muse, like like pussy Muse esque, like not old Muse, like what they would put out. Yeah. There. And I was just like, you know what? At least it's not all a Blink One Eighty Two rehash. And then the moment happened where she t- she turns around. That there was a TV set that was like the like just like 
decoration on the stage. She takes a swig off of a prop beer. There's no way that was a real beer. She takes a swig off of a prop beer, throws it, and then gently places the guitar through the fake uh, cracked screen that they gave her to make it look like she was actually breaking the TV. She gently just slides it in the hole that was already fake there. And then she kicks the microphone stand off time to the end of the song because you could tell she wanted to be bam and then kick it at the same time but she didn't she missed her mark she kicked it and then song ended right after and it was just like the most disgusting phony fucking child that just i mean 11 silver spoons thinking she's going through some problems fucking because her her mom beats her dad and and then and then he beats other people and now she's all fucking moody and she's kicking shit that off time and then she gently places a guitar through a fake tv that wasn't broke to, that was always broken on purpose uh it was just the most poser fucking disgusting shit i've ever seen in my life and i literally out loud went oh no don't know the because I if it was just the beer and she finished her her three power chords because she's playing guitar she's playing the instrument she's singing not it's not all auto tune if there was auto tune you could tell the breath she was taking the shit that she was hitting she was really singing and then for her and if you're going to be a phony but you're not going to do that then okay then you're just but you're you're still you're still a musician. And you're still an artist. This was the biggest sack of phony poser shit I've ever seen in my whole life. And it ruined it. Because I I really was thinking to myself, you know, this is way better than Machine Gun Kelly. She should get credit for this, even though it's garbage. But it's garbage that has a little bit of a bow around it. That's some creative bow. And then I just, and then that just, that just ruined the rest of my night. It ruined my night. I looked at the, I looked at the host, the Irish gentleman. I looked at him different. That's how bad that, that was. Matthew, your thoughts. Hey, it wasn't that bad. <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> Um, first song was boring. I didn't care about it. I didn't notice anything good or bad. I just it was. Yeah. Um it it was. Um well I actually listened to the matter order and I listened to the the more rock song and I said this isn't too bad. She's playing, she's singing, I'll give her credit. Um I don't really care about any of the shit at the end. Um it doesn't make me feel anything. Um I think she's prob she's she's probably one of the most meaningless musicians that's, that makes music right now. Um, I feel like for me to have an, any form of emotional response to this would would um, wouldn't make any sense because it's meaningless. So M Willow Smith is completely meaningless as a musician. I think you're wrong. First of all, it's Willow. Well, I'm, excuse me. In all caps, Willow is completely meaningless as a musician today. But this is the this is the the real problem is is that there's a lot of people that deserve to have the Saturday Night Live spot. spots. Yeah, it's a good spot. That's a really good spot. It was a great show. Um, she shouldn't even be sniffing. Any TV time but battle. Let's let's be real. Saturday Night Live is also meaningless now too. It's funny, but it means nothing. It has no it's, cultural impact anymore. But you know what though? I'm. It's I I feel it's swinging back around. They have a whole new cast besides Keenan. Pretty much, he could stay forever. Though. All, he could stay forever. Yeah, Keenan he's Thompson will always be. Well, he's he's he so should, funny. He should when Lauren passes away. He should. Uh, take it over, but uh, that's another. That's another. That's another fucking 
I'm going to, I'm going to be a rebel until I have a bunch of money. And now I'm going to be a fucking member of the establishment clown, Lauren Michaels. Uh, I don't know actually nothing about him. I just, it's just the, it's the, I don't know. SNL, at least like two seasons ago when I, I pretty much watched every, every episode, it was, it just, it was boring to me. So I'm glad to hear that they're turning it around. Um, Cause I was like, well, what's the point of having a show come on at 11 o'clock on Saturday night and have it be this big thing. And it used to be so edgy and not have it be edgy anymore. Like have it be edgy, like push some fucking boundaries. I, I think TV anymore. Anyway, people watch YouTube more than TV anyway. Yeah, but I'm telling you, I, I don't know if it's ever going to be relevant because of people don't watch TV, but I'm telling you, the quality has stepped up. Um, they, they don't just, they, they obviously bury Trump still a little bit, but they make, like, they make fun of both sides. Like, they, they made a couple Biden jokes that were hysterical. Like, so, like, they're, and, and all, like I said, all the, the, the writers, that's are, good. They're all younger people now. I didn't like that they got rid of Shane. Was it Shane Gillis? Was he the comedian that they fired for saying? Yeah, yeah, up. they got rid of him for some stupid. But he's a fucking bullshit. He's an edgy comedian. That's what they do. They say stupid shit. Comedians are supposed to be edgy. That's their job. Yeah, their job so, is they're they supposed to make jokes about everything. Well, besides that, back to Willow Smith. Um, so I'm going to take the philosophical approach to Willow Smith. I don't think Willow Smith. Yes, I guess it's a net negative because someone better could have played on that spot. Not even better. Someone someone that that, that needs the spot. That needs somebody the that works. Well well, somebody that that has, you know, doesn't have two parents in the industry, in the entertainment industry already. Yeah. Like That's that would be nice. Like the macro. No. You know, I it, I swear to God, there there's of course, we deserve it more than her. But there's everyone, every artist we know, even if we don't like them, that's on our level, fucking deserves it more than her. Yeah, well, they actually mean something. She doesn't mean anything. It's just, uh, yeah. She's mean. But, but that didn't annoy me. It really didn't annoy me. Until she... She threw the guitar through the... Yeah, that was she, stupid. She did not throw the guitar. That was really stupid. She gently put it in the slot that was created for her before. And then, you know what? I'm just thinking about it now. Fucking smoke came out of the TV. It was a big deal. Like she was a big thing. You know, nothing will be, nothing will be worse than Katy Perry's SNL performance. Oh, no, no, no. I'd rather watch Migos. Who was it? Who was it? Ashley Tisdale that did the uh, not Ashley Tisdale. Jessica you're Simpson. Thinking of, you're Ashley thinking of Simpson. Ashley Simpson. So Ashley played Simpson. the wrong track for her. She, her her not being able to sing is way better than that Katy Perry thing. It is way better. That Katy Perry thing is the worst thing of all time. That ruined her. I'm career. saying it's worse. I'm saying it's worse. Yeah, Katy no, Perry has not been the same since. I'm saying no. I'm saying Katy Perry is the worst of all time. Oh yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying too. Yeah, Katy Perry is definitely the worst. I couldn't believe what I seen, um, because the song. I'm, this is this is the thing. If she if she made a joke song and was doing that, and it, or not even a joke song, a lighthearted, that's supposed to be like a like a sexy song. You have the Migos in it that are like rapping about getting bitches. It was the least sexiest song I've ever heard in my life. It was fucking horrendous. It was uh mm. Mm. SNL had some bad performance. Remember Lana Ray? Do we even are we I, I actually right now Mac Rule one. Mac rule or commandment, the Mac man, Mac Mandment, the Mac mandate number one is dropping. We are I am banning Lana Ray from the podcast. <laughs> okay. She's banned. She'll never be on. She'll never be on. And no one is allowed to talk about her. And if they talk about her, there will be consequences. Do you know do you know why I love that really a whole lot? 
She's banned from the podcast. She's never coming on. Do you know why I love that? Why? Because my favorite podcast, my not all sports, because that's fired up. Fired up um, is your favorite Sixers podcast, right? My favorite just Sixers podcast is Right to Ricky Sanchez. You always have to say the name, and they have a banned list. And it's all beat writers and national news people that were like Doris Burke and Bill Simmons are the number one and number two banned. They're not never allowed on. Yeah. And then it yeah, goes down, the and Mark then it'll go down the like to like Keith, Pom- Keith Pompey. I don't know if he's banned, but but you know I who else is banned? banned list. You know who else is banned? Number two, Adam Levine. Yeah. Ready? Banned. He's what done. episode are we on? Episode six hundred and forty three. So when we get the episode when we get the episode uh in the past, if we took a time machine, right? Yes. And we got the episode forty. Episode forty is when we release the official twenty twenty two band list for the Mac Brothers podcast. Mm-hmm. That's where we we drop we drop our first our our uh, honorary uh, band. They're banned from the Mac Brothers podcast. Yeah, it'll be the 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 yeah the band. As a matter of fact, all all Mac Media they're banned from all Mac Media. If we're walking the red carpet, and one of them walks by us, you know I'm gonna have to pull out the big, you know red circle sign with the arrow through it and I'm going to th- I'm going to have a plush one I'm going to throw it right in Lana Del Rey's face in the, in the fur right her face depending on how drunk I am I will smack a cell phone out of Adam Levine's hand if I see him pick and up then, phone, and then and then and then I'm going to catch it under as it's falling to the ground I'm going to catch it right before I hit the ground and I'm going to say let that be a lesson to you Adam Levine <laughs> and then we're gonna, and then we're both gonna, we're gonna ride away on our segways, and then we're gonna say tee like that. Yeah, we're gonna say tee hee, and we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna ride away, ride away. We're gonna have capes too. Yeah, so Lana, mm-hmm. Lana Del Rey and Adam Levine, they're 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 definitely definitely banned. Yeah, fuck. They're no. definitely banned. I, you know, I don't, I don't have any. Uh, no, it's just gonna come. It's just gonna. It's just gonna come. You know. It's just going to come as it comes, you know? That's all there is to it. I don't have any anger towards... Um, what's her name? Lana Del Rey. We're also, we're also going to start a Hall of Fame, too. Oh, yeah. Oh, Matthew, wait a minute. Wait, I got to figure out something. It's any anyone we like is going to be in our Hall of Fame. And we have to... Our, our first inductee, we should have a first inductee. It should be our good old, our good old pal... In honor of him, we should name it the Mike Scrivani Hall of Fame. I love it. Yep. And it's was- anyone we like, anyone we appreciate, anyone who does something good, doesn't matter what they do, they could they could be in our Hall of Fame. It has to be special. It has to be a year thing. A year thing? A uh, once a year thing. That's it. That's when we induct people into the Hall of Fame. I thought it would only be for extremely epic things that happen. Yeah. Very once rarely. A year. Once a year. Okay. So you know what? Here's the rule, though. We can nominate people throughout the year. So, the but they might not make pod- a cut. Listen, the last podcast of the year, give or take, will be out December twenty eighth. Yes. And I think that's when we unveil unveil our duckies. Are Mike Scrivani Hall of Fame inductees for 2022 and the first ever Mac Brothers band list? I'm with it. All totally right. with it. I got to put that in the calendar. And that gives people, if you're watching and you're new or you're old or anywhere in between, this set your calendars. December 28th. Set them. December 28th is our New Year's. Mac Brothers Extravaganza, where we are 2022 Mike Scrivani in honor of the late and great Mike Scrivani. Um, 
who we'll get backstory on him further as we go. Uh, great musician too, but um, Hall of the most Giovanni Hall of Fame and the Mac the Brothers, Mac Brothers ban list. I love our it. official, our our basically the certified do's and don'ts of the Mac Brothers. Yeah, don't come on and do or do come on. I'm putting it in our calendar right now. See, this is what you get with the Mac Brothers podcast. You get you get so much spontaneous action over here. I spelled Scrivani wrong. Hold on. That's okay, John. That's okay. We all make mistakes. It's just about how we bounce back from them. That was my Willow Smith quote of the day. <laughs> you know, is yeah. that what Willow Smith advised? Yeah, yeah, she. I have her. This year, piece is my our producer, who is Willow Smith's our producer. Um, did you did you see um, Kanye West's private school and what they do to the children? No. All right. So, <laughs> what could they be doing to the children? All right. So Kanye West has a has a private school called like mm-hmm. Donda Academy, right? He named it after his mom. Yeah. Now listen. Now listen. His mother died in a tragic way, and I wouldn't wish anybody's mother to die that way. But at a certain point, when, you know, I guess he's, he's mentally ill and he needs help, but you're doing all this shit and you're becoming such an ass, and you're saying all these all these hateful things against Jewish people and all these awful things, and you, you now have this... So he started at Donda Academy. It's, it's 15 grand for the year. Sign your kid up. You have to sign a non-disclosure agreement. You can't talk about anything that goes on there. So uh, there's a video that came out, and the uniform is like, it looks like all black outfits in his, like, fashion line. Like, it looks like they're wearing all black Kanye West handpicked outfits for each of them. Like, they looks crazy. So they, they all start by singing a medley of the beginning of the song Donda, or Donda, Donda, right? So there's, like, say, like, 100 kids in a room. And the, the conductor person will point one way and the one side of kids will say Donda. They'll point the other way, the other side of kids say Donda. Then, because it's what they do in the morning, and he points both his fingers and then some of the kids start singing Good Morning, the intro to Good Morning, and then it's offset with the other kids singing Donda. It's the like most cult-like video. It's, it's, it's crazy. I, I, was, I was telling, uh, I was talking to people at my work about it, and I was like, in the, in like 15 years, there's going to be a documentary about how Kanye West started a cult out of his school of like weird Kanye West followers. It's the fucking craziest thing. Yeah. Like he's it's... completely ruining him. What I'm trying to say is when you do all this stupid shit and you're naming stuff there, you're, you're starting a creepy cult-like academy in your mom's name. That's not really something you should attach to your mom's name. Yeah. It's it's awful. It's crazy. Oh, you have to look the video up, though. It's the craziest video. So we're in the doctor's office. We're leaving the doctor's office today. Uh, we uh, okay. our mother was in the well. She wasn't in the hospital. She had an appointment. It's not like. Um, and I might have told you this, but I want to. I, I should have saved it for the pod, but I'm going to say it now. So. Oh, it's just the elevator thing. So we get in the elevator. Oh my god! And there is a guy in there with us. It's only a three per person per ride elevator. So it's me, our mother. But if you don't know, she's five foot two, the most Italian um, elf you'll ever meet. Um, Queen of South Philly. Yeah, and she she has her. She just she just has ideas, and she she has one. She just don't. She don't have a filter. She just says that. So we get on the elevator. She don't like heights. She don't like closed in spaces. And she goes, um, "Now this guy, mind you, he's in scrubs. He just probably worked a twelve-hour shift. He's exhausted. You could tell in his face. He's flush. He's exhausted. It's hard and job he, being a doctor or nurse, whatever he was. Whatever he is, even if he's like a fucking like a like a bedroom chamber, like you know the the." I don't, think they have, bags. I don't know if, I don't know if they have an exclusive chambermaid or chamberman 
anymore. <laughs> oh, wow. I don't think that's. Whatever. I don't think that's. I think we well, figured we, that out. Well, we were we were at a castle, so <laughs> you know. yes. But so she gets in there and she goes, uh, "You you you you're not parked on the seventh floor, are you?" And uh, it's, that's as tall as the the, the style of elevator too. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So you get in, and it's the the one where you can see outside. It's like an open elevator. And she goes, oh, no, 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 no. I was like, God, oh, it'll go real quick. And the elevator door is shut, and the guy's in there with us. And she goes, oh, I don't want it to go quick. Because then we would fall, we would die, and we would crash, and we would burn. And while she's saying that, she looks over at the, the nurse or doctor or whatever he is. And he goes, uh. He didn't know what to what to say, and she and she was like looking at him for like, "Am I right or am I right?" Like her approval, yeah. I was so embarrassed. <laughs> and then then she also looked at him and say, "We would die." Well, no, it, it was like um, we would we would fall, we would fall, we would crash, and we would die. We would be set on fire. That's what it was. We we would be uh, or no up in flames. But she, has, she says things. <laughs> she says things so optimistically yeah, that are yeah, the, the, flames. the saddest thing. <laughs> you know, I knew a guy one time that jumped off this bridge that we're on. Like, oh, very gee, morbid. Okay. Yeah. Oh, gee, the, yeah. Loves the yeah. Ring. Oh, but don't worry. He he, his body exploded on impact. Like, yeah. Oh, he died before he had the heart attack in the air. He died before he. You know, though, John, that's a South Philly thing. I think there's a lot of people in South Philly that just talk about morbid shit, but yeah. a lot of them don't have the optimistic tone. With a lot of them, walk around like, Ugh. "Hey, how you doing?" And they'll actually tell you how they're doing. They're oh, my my back hurts, and my they're they're cutting my disability at the end of the month, and my wife, uh, you yeah, my wife. Uh, Jeez, or at least she used to be. Matt, dear, they're, one they're time, awful. when I worked at the casino, I had to drive. Well, no, I've gotten the, because I was a manager, so I had to go with the driver. He was an outside security driver, older South Philly guy. And I, I don't want to say his name, but it was the most South Philly name you can imagine. And he's driving us there, and it's live casino. So it's South Philly, and we had to go to Southwest to go to the Ford dealership. Mm -hmm. to get the car fixed and he's I'm in the passenger seat with him and he's sitting there and he's just tapping his he's driving with, with the left hand and he's just tapping his steering wheel angry and I was like yo you alright and he goes like this and now I, I don't know him that well I, I, I really haven't spoken to this guy too much besides hello and here's your radio or whatever and he says to me he goes Mac, my fucking wife, this fucking bitch. And I was like, what happened? And he goes, she fucking threw out my receipts. <laughs> I remember the story, the receipt story. <laughs> and I said, your receipts? Mm -hmm. And he said, yeah, my fucking receipts. And, and now, John, I, I don't need them. But they ain't hers to be fucking throwing out. <laughs> and I was like, ah. Oh. This he, is what South Philly people do. The best line, yeah. he, he says, he's quiet for another second. And he goes, Mac, sometimes I want to chop her fucking fingers off. <laughs> there you go. Okay. And I'm, I'm driving another 15 minutes with this guy in, quiet, in silence. Aether, he tells me that. You don't know that's the safest drive you'll ever have. Yeah. He would never think to do that to anybody else but his wife. <laughs> my fucking wife. Threw out my receipt. My wife. She threw out my receipt. That's such a self Philly guy thing. And he said, too, like he admitted, I, I probably won't need them. But but I, I wanted them because they're mine. Like, that's something yeah, that... Know? There was probably like seven years of receipts that she she threw out like six years of them. Yeah. Oh, Charlie, you only need the other the, the last year. You know. You don't tell me how many years I need. 
<laughs> I bought a sport and pay for, and I want to know it. <laughs> what, what did he? Oh, then he was telling me about his pills. He was like, um, oh, yeah, they all those guys, they, they all take a million pills. They always got a thing, they got a hip thing or a knee thing, or it could be an elbow thing or a nose thing or an ear thing, or they have one specific thing. It's a, it's, but it's chronic. Yeah. Mm. All of them, every single one of them. And if they don't have one, they'll make it up. I think I got this thing. <laughs> I got this thing. One time, one time, Matthew, I'm having a severe panic attack. I think it's a heart attack and I'm going to the, and I literally went to, or I was thinking about going to the emergency room. That's how bad it was. And I tell our, our illustrious father and he yeah. goes, and he goes, uh, you know, I think I got a touch of that. <laughs> <laughs> a little touch of the panic. <laughs> It's the same. It's the South Philly guy thing. It's South Philly. And the same way our, our our mother is like the queen of South Philly. He's like the king of South Philly. Yeah. Oh, he's the he's the king of of all of South Philly. Of uh, yeah, of all the goom of all the goombas. And then, you know, it's funny. He um, the people that he like, like. I don't want to – never mind. I was going to say something about uh, – never mind. It wasn't about him, though, but – I was going to I was gonna say something about something. Some I of the people he knows – some of the people, the stories he tells me about some of the people that he just – that are in his life. They're crazy. Not by, his, not by his choice, the people that are in his life. Or it's just crazy. But that – I think that's just that. I, I think that's just anything. Sometimes I feel – I feel like um, – look, we live a very – I, I feel like we're we're almost posh now. Yeah. Like uh, like 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 you, you kind of get into a bubble and you only deal with who you deal with, and you don't realize still how crazy people are. <laughs> yeah. All the time until you experience it right in front of your face. One day I, I'll um. We don't have time right now, but I, I I for for the podcast I should tell a story about the guy, me and Lippery and and Fonz met. Oh like, my god! Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and then that might be a special. That might be a special guest uh, podcast. We might need to make that a thing. Remember, we, we, you know, I think we're probably the best. We're not the best at marketing, but we're the best at coming up with names for shit. Yeah, we definitely have good names. Like when we were uh, nineteen, our problems, not the name. Our problems having people know that the name exists. Yeah, that's the one issue. So if you if you're still watching, please tell your friends. And if you're a marketing genius that wants to work for free, and then we'll we'll all eventually make a ton of money later, hit us up. It won't be free. It'll be I'll give them ten dollars. I'll give them ten dollars per uh piece of material. Million they work followers. On. Yeah, ten dollars per million followers. <laughs> I think that's I think that's equitable. Yeah. What's who needs well, there, who needs marketing anyway? Who needs marketing anyway? Matthew, if they work fast, you know, I mean, I could be out like a two hundred dollars. Yeah, that's not worth two hundred. That's not worth millions and millions and millions of followers. Yeah. Are you doing okay? So, to to pivot just a little bit, we don't have we have a little bit of time left. Have you or have you not watched anything scary yet for spooky season? Um, let me think because, well, I tried to watch something. I thought it was going to be a really good TV, sh the Netflix show. Did you chicken out? Yeah, and it was the you chickened out of something. Oh no no no, not chickened. I I think you said I checked it out. No, it was the worst fucking thing I've ever seen. I stopped watching the first episode. Oh my god, horror there's so much bad horror out there. You know what you know, um one thing. Uh, I I the new Halloween movie with Halloween ends or whatever the fuck it's called, the nineteenth millionth Halloween movie. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna watch it. And I'm gonna do the Halloween ends report next week. I'll, okay. I'll, I'll I'm gonna I'll fill I'll fill you in. 
I'll let you know how it is. I do not have high expectations. I have very, very, very low expectations. For I guess I'll have to watch Do I have to watch it? It's on Peacock. I have Peacock. It's on Peacock. There's a there's one on Hulu that that looks good, but they already spoiled what the the supernatural monster looks like, and it's not. What's the scary. point? What's the fucking point? Yeah, it was. I was bummed out. Want any of that? Horror is not the scary if there's no mystery behind it. If things, if you're like, it's like if everything is scary in front of you, the rest of the movie is not going to be. I don't know. It's so hard to do good horror. Like there's there's such a shortage of good horror out there. You know why too? You need a ba- I need a backstory that makes sense and that's also a little mystical if it's going to be something original too. Well, I mean, when I'm talking I'm talking about monsters right now. Like 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 um like some of the shit in G- the Game of Thrones books is fucking horrifying. And Yeah. You know, I was watching has, Game of Thrones. The show's actually kind of scary too. Yeah, and that has, but but like there's a, there's an incredible backstory. You know what I mean? That's so yes. detailed, yes. and it's still being fleshed out. Look at the the greatest horror show that I've ever saw, The Haunting of Hill House, the remake TV show. The reason why it was so scary is because every character had a character that you yeah. could invest in. You were yeah. worried about them, and they they sold. The mystery you didn't you didn't just know what the what the scary people or entity entities looked like. There was a mystery. What the fuck is that? Yeah, that's the mystery behind all of it. It's so it's so yeah. crazy. It blows my mind. Here's it's like I don't know. I can't do it. I can't do bad horror. I'll start to get upset. <laughs> I'll start to get upset. Like, I get, I, nothing fires me up like bad horror. Like um um the Baba Duck. Oh, don't even get me fucking started on the Baba Duke. Don't even get me started. That movie fucking killed my whole soul. That movie killed me. That 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 was my last great attempt to take a chance on a horror movie that that I thought was going to be bad because it was so good for for like it was so good for only a little bit of time. Yeah. And then you actually saw the Baba Duke and they were using the same fucking sounds that they would use in Power Rangers for monsters. They were using for this thing. Yeah. And it was like it was like a fucking doll that just flew in the sea. I was like, what the fuck is that? Yeah, it was so fucking terrible. That it kind was of reminds me, That reminds me of the Hulu show that I'm talking about that I that I won't I don't know if I watch. I still might just cause but uh Matt I think we just were out of time. Cause. We got to wrap it up, guys. Go listen to Just a Summer Way. Go listen to There Goes My Baby. Like and subscribe. Uh, vote for Honey Bats. Vote for her in our her horror competition. Kyle, I vote every day. Social Kyle. Media. I have, too. She's making the, she made the finals, damn it. So go listen to our music, too. Go listen to our music and listen to the podcast.